Hey guys, this is Christo here. Uh, so let's check out a setup that is um, animating a boat on some ocean waves. So uh, we are going to check out the how to build the ocean, uh, the rig of the boat, and transfer the animation from the rig onto the renderable boat, uh, which is quite awesome. So uh, we start with just the grid for the um, base of the ocean, the diary mesh and I then built the waves. So you see that uh, they start from the, this neutral position and then uh, the smooth sine waves get applied and on top of this the ocean spectrum is making things more you know, ocean. -y. So um, here the interesting part is the waves. So uh, that's basically a sine curve. Uh, so I just take the z, uh, which is, I think, this direction for an argument of the sign, and then I just build up um, some of the controls. So it, it's very nice to check out this expression. If you guys are not familiar with the sign curve, it's extremely useful uh, all the time in computer graphics, so it's something that is really worth uh, to, uh, to have an idea about, and it's really simple. So um, you add the time to the um, length here, across which you want your sine curve. Uh, you multiply that with the uh, pulse length, and um, you then multiply the result of that with the frequency that you want to get, and you multiply again that, the whole, that whole thing with the amplitude. And this is building uh, the height that I um, assign to the p dot y. Uh, and I fit it with the frame uh, so that between 24 and 96 it's raising from 0 to 1 uh, which means that before 24 it's 0 and um, after 96 it's 1. So this is useful because I want to, to start with um, a smooth like waveless surface just so I can have some pre-roll for my boat to kind of get to a neutral you know floating position. Um, then Okay, there is uh, uh, the ocean spectrum, which is building up these waves, and the ocean evaluator just applying them to the uh, otherwise flat surface. Uh, some normals get created after this, and my assigned color. Uh, so that's about it for the um, ocean, basically. So uh, the boat, I have picked up this awesome model from uh, Static 3D at TurboScript, which I'm thankful for. It's very good stuff. And uh, transform it from centimeters uh, into into the meters uh, in Houdini. Uh, then I I think I was giving it a little bit of a um, reposition, uh, but I have given up on this. So this is my renderable boat geometry. Now what I need to build is the rig for the boat. So uh, first I just leave the home because don't really need the rest of the stuff uh, for the trick they're not really going to be participating in that um, wave action uh, now of course when you do get to do the um, rigging and the uh, cloth all this kind of stuff is still useful but not, not so far so because I want to approach it as a, a volume that I will uh, fill up and then slice into individual pieces I will fill up the uh, holes so I can turn it into a volume, which I don't need to be anything high res. So just leave like a really low res volume and fill it up with some points uh, with quite a sparse interval. You can see there's just like a dozen of points here. Uh, and I convert them to a VDB on the other side and I fracture. I explode view is going to give me that basically very regular. Uh, small simple pieces so um, the idea is that I will connect these pieces with constraints and then I will be looking at how they relate to the surface of the ocean and I'm going to be pushing them upwards uh, when they are under the ocean or surface, surface so to do that I am assembling um, and this will be my packed geometry that is going to um, simulate rigid bodies with and this is the um, these guys here are the constraints that I create with character JSON pieces 
Uh, so here, because we just need one connection per point, so yeah, you know, connect the centers of uh, mass mass of these points. I pack the uh, beforehand, so the connected JSON pieces only sees the packed points and is gonna only create connections between the centers of points and not the anything on the surface or whatever. So um, I have picked six points, which is making the whole thing quite interconnected. You can see on this side. I need to create a couple of attributes on the constraints, uh, primitives, so uh, the bullet solver is going to know that these have a certain name and these constraint both the position and the rotation. That's what constraints type says. Um, on the other hand, I'm just using the assembled geometry as uh, the output of my pack geometry. Now moving into the uh, .NET. See what we have. So I have built up the the view here using um, guide for the water and the boat meshes. Um, so the boat here is the renderable boat, and we are gonna get there. Maybe I will just disable this for now. And you can see the constraint network, and I will show up the um, egg like that. Maybe I can display the name, so... Can I do that? Not on the pack, guys. Okay, anyway. Uh, so this is the rig. And then... I do the hard co constraint relationship. Uh, so... The... Um, name that I have picked for the constraints goes here, uh, the uh, path to these constraints go in the constraint network, and the um, uh, packed geometry for the boat goes in the already packed object. Uh, so far so good, now the fun part is that I want to get the depth somehow, so I know that when a piece is under the, the water surface it is getting, it, it gets gets pushed upwards. So the way to do that, uh, use a pop vop where uh, the important part is the intersect node. So basically I'm going to be shooting an array upwards and if it hits the um, surface of the water, I'm going to um, save it as, as the as a depth attribute. Uh, and that's exactly what I do, so I just pick up the position. Uh, the only thing that I change here is that I add a, a constant to the height uh, because sometimes I want to uh, make kind of the center of buoyancy a little bit lower um, so this is just allowing me to offset it a little bit down and that's something that I expose and otherwise uh, straightforward as I said uh, I shoot a long array upwards and then I get the uh, position of the array hit and I get distance between the positions of the uh, particle you know, the point and the um, intersection. So this is basically gonna be the um, that distance upwards. This is the, the depth. So once I save that, I you know, make a buoyancy force where um, using the vex expressions and um, a fit, you can make it, uh, you can make the depth um, control the amount of force. So you can see quite a lot of force. Uh, so I uh, remap the depth so that um, it can have the maximum amount of influence uh, at three meters depth. Gravity is, you know, the usual gravity, and a pop drag is again uh, remapped with the depth um, and only applied when the depth is more than uh, zero. So I don't apply too much drag when it's uh, uh, when the uh, boat is above the water and, you know, um, I just uh, need this drag because the buoyancy force is so strong that, you know, it pushes the whole thing quite up. Uh, and then uh, the um, dop simulation is done here. So all that is left it is to apply that animation to the renderable boat. And to do that, I uh, transfer the, the name attribute from the um, 
the packed geo that is about to enter the uh, dynamic sim to the render whole geo. And then this uh, transfer name attribute is going to allow me to use the transform pieces node so I can move the renderable points with the simulated points. That's exactly what happens. So you can see how to transfer here between the two rest frame geometries that are not moving and the visualization of the main parameter. You can see here that um, each uh, area, you know, each point of, of the boat picks up a different name piece from the rig geometry to get moved by. And then um, this feeds into the transform pieces and transform pieces is doing the actual animation. So send the animation from the uh, rig to the render, to the render geometry. Um, I'm just here importing the simulation of the boat from the dynamics without anything else. And that's basically it. You know, this is the render about my boat. And I just merge and cache. Now, of course, uh, what's left is to do all the, uh, you know, the real fun part of um, <laughs> doing the flip simulations and all the secondaries uh, around the boat. But, you know, that's uh, the... Uh, that's the basic rig, and you can see it's quite fast to uh, simulate, even when it's not cached. So, if I disable the cache, you can see it's not too crazy. Uh, it simulates quite quite quick, and um, you can speed this up even more, you know, by bypassing the uh, transfer to the renderable geo. Uh, so it's quite efficient and easy to direct. Um, it's gonna respond to any wave geometry that you feed it, and um, of course, you will have to tweak it out a little bit so you can make it, you know, as bouncy as you like. So, uh, yeah, thanks guys and see you soon.